If you were being chased by a crazy killer in your dreams, what would you do? This supernatural psycho is out for revenge and he's going to take over your nightmares to get it. I'm here to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat Freddy Krueger in A Nightmare on Elm Street. Four kids from a small town are about to have their worst nightmares become reality. Shuffling around his creepy workshop, Freddy Krueger puts together a sinister weapon. He takes the blades off of four knives and straps them to each finger on a beat-up leather glove using a hammer, blowtorch, and other tools. Freddy puts together the glove and tries it on. He flexes his fingers and growls. His signature weapon is ready, and now the nightmare can begin. A terrified young girl appears in front of an all-white background. Looking around in a panic, she runs down a flooded tunnel. A creepy voice taunts her from the shadows as she looks around for who is talking. Suddenly, a lamb appears from out of nowhere and takes off into the dark. The girl is so freaked out that she screams and starts running further into the building. But she's about to find out that this is much worse than an ordinary nightmare. Running through an abandoned boiler room full of fog and red lights, the girl tries her hardest to find a way out, but she is totally lost. Feeling her way down the dark hallway, she ends up right in the worst place imaginable, Freddy's workshop. Suddenly, she spins around and sees Freddy using his knife finger glove to slice through a hanging sheet. She runs away but makes a wrong turn and finds herself trapped by a roaring fireplace. The girl screams out in terror, knowing that there is no way out, but when she looks back to where Freddy was, she sees nothing there. And that's when Freddy bursts out and grabs her from behind. Suddenly, the girl wakes up in her own bed. She clearly just had a terrible nightmare. Her mother comes in to check on her, and that's when we find out her name is Tina. Tina tells her mother that it was just a dream, but her mother looks suspicious. And that's when they noticed four slashes in Tina's dress that looked just like they were made by Freddy's glove. Before Tina has a chance to explain, her mom's boyfriend shows up and tells her mom to come back to bed. Tina's mom warns her not to have any more nightmares and closes the door, leaving Tina alone in the dark. She grabs her crucifix off the wall and lays back down in bed, holding it tightly to her chest, clearly still horrified by what she just experienced. Okay, this nightmare just went from scary to deadly. Tina might think she made it out okay, but she has no idea that the real nightmare is just about to start. Tina already seems scared of her own shadow. You can tell she's going to be in a lot of trouble when Freddy really gets down to business. I mean, if she's screaming at the sight of a little lamb running by, she's going to need a lot more courage to take on a guy who has actual knives for fingers. Sure enough, when Freddy pops out to grab her, Tina freaks out and runs right to a dead end, trapped by the burning fireplace. This seems pretty obvious to me, but before she turned down the hallway, she could definitely see that it was a dead end. As soon as I saw the fireplace blocking the end of the hall, I would have definitely tried to escape another way. If there was no other way to go, there's still plenty of options here to defend yourself from Freddy's attack. Looking around, Tina would have to notice that she is in a maintenance area surrounded by tools and construction materials. There must be some sort of pipe, wrench, or even a brick that she could find to at least give herself a fighting chance. Even in the worst case scenario, where there's nothing around to use against Freddy, you could try to get him to lunge toward you and just dive away, just in time, sending him flying into the fire, or at least opening up a chance for you to escape. Whatever you do, just standing there and screaming like Tina isn't going to get you anywhere but dead. Now, the biggest red flag of all is when Tina wakes up with the cut marks actually on her dress. I mean, we've all had those nightmares that seem so real while they're happening, but I've never woken up from one with actual cuts in my shirt. Psychologically, nightmares can leave you terrified for hours after waking up, but there should never be any physical effects in real life. This is a super obvious sign that there's going to be more going on than just an ordinary bad dream. Her own mom sees this, and instead of asking what could possibly have caused the cuts, she scolds Tina for waking her up and ripping her clothes. I understand that Tina doesn't want to seem crazy or bother her mom, but I would say this more than qualifies as a time to ask for some help. Freddy's claw marks showing up on her shirt in real life shows that she's clearly in actual danger. And I wouldn't have wanted to be alone or try to get any more sleep at all that night. The next morning is a beautiful day, and Tina and her friends drive to school together in a red convertible. Tina walks to class with her boyfriend Rod, her best friend Nancy, and Nancy's boyfriend Glenn, and starts to tell them all about the crazy things that happened to her the night before. Nancy says she had a nightmare too, but when Tina tries to ask her what it was about, Nancy just tells her not to worry about it, and that everyone has bad dreams once in a while. Glenn tells Tina that next time she is having a nightmare to try and remember that it's just a dream, and then she will wake right up, and says that it always works for him. 
Tina tries to ask Glenn if he had a nightmare last night too, but he hears the school bell and runs away before she can ask him. Tina and Nancy decide to just ignore their nightmares for now and walk inside the school together to start their classes for the day. Tina jokes that maybe the nightmares are a sign that a natural disaster like an earthquake is coming, but soon they are going to find out that the disaster coming for them is more supernatural than anyone could expect. That night, Tina, Nancy, and Glenn are hanging out at Tina's house. Her mom is going to be away for two days, so she invited her friends to sleep over. Tina is clearly still very worried that Freddy is going to come back. She thanks them for coming over and says she's surprised Glenn's overprotective mom is letting him spend the night. That's when Nancy and Glenn reveal their plan to trick his mom over the phone using his cousin who lives near the airport as a cover story, and a boombox with a red cassette tape Rod gave them to provide some convincing sound effects. The plan works perfectly, and while the kids are all having a good laugh, Nancy says it seems like Tina is starting to feel better. Tina says that she hasn't been able to stop thinking about the creepy guy from her nightmare all day, and that's when Nancy remembers dreaming about the same guy too. She says that he wore a dirty red and green sweater and had knives for fingernails. Tina knows that it's definitely Freddy, and suddenly they hear a noise in the backyard. The girls send Glenn out to investigate, and at first it seems like nothing is there, but when Glenn turns around to tell them it's safe, suddenly he's attacked by Rod, who is hiding in the dark bushes. Rod makes fun of them with a gardening tool that looks a lot like Freddy's claw, and when Glenn tells him to cut it out, he pulls out a switchblade, showing that he has a knife. Rod takes Tina inside, and just as Nancy and Glenn are about to leave, Tina asks them to stay for the night. They agree to stay, and Nancy tells Glenn that she is really scared of Freddy Krueger too. Later that night, Tina and Rod are in bed, and she hears creepy noises outside the bedroom window. Tina tries to wake Rod up, but he is fast asleep. She gets up to check outside the window and is startled when the glass suddenly cracks, and the same creepy voice from the night before whispers her name somewhere in the darkness. In another room, Nancy is sleeping alone, and Freddy starts pushing right through the ceiling above her, as if he is going to grab her, but by the time she wakes up, Freddy is already gone. He'll be coming back for her later. Meanwhile, Tina walks outside into the street, to determines to find out what's going on. Freddy is waiting out there for her, and he walks towards her with his arms stretched all the way across both sides of the street, scraping his knives against some metal. Tina tries to run, but Freddy can pop out anywhere. He chases Tina down and corners her in the front yard, cutting off two of his own fingers just to freak her out. Tina runs away terrified, but Freddy tackles her, and while they're fighting, Tina pulls off his face, showing his skull underneath. This doesn't bother Freddy at all, and in fact, he laughs about it. It turns out Tina was still in bed all along, and her screaming finally wakes up Rod. He jumps up just in time to see her being slashed on the stomach by Freddy's knives, and dragged up the wall and across the ceiling by an invisible force, screaming at the top of her lungs the whole time. Tina drops to the floor dead, and her blood sprays all over Rod. Rod completely freaks out and jumps out of the window, saying he'll kill whoever did this. Nancy and Glenn come running for help, but the bedroom door is locked, and by the time they are able to get it open, all they find is Tina's bloody body and Rod nowhere in sight. Okay, Nancy and Tina definitely should have talked more about their nightmares. I know everyone has bad dreams like Nancy says, but if you got chased by Freddy Krueger in your dream and woke up with cuts on your shirt in real life, that's definitely something to share with your best friend right away. Glenn is the first person to bring anything helpful to the situation when he gives Tina the advice to try and remember that it's just a dream and wake herself up. This actually works a lot of the time and it can be very helpful if you are suspicious you might be in a nightmare. Sleep experts say that the best way to protect yourself from a nightmare is to avoid having them in the first place. There are actually a lot of ordinary things you might not realize can lead you to have bad dreams. Stress, some type of medicine, and even just snacking at night can all cause nightmares if you aren't careful. Tina might be stressed out from school or things going on at home, and that night she stays up late eating snacks with her friends. Both of these are a really bad idea if you're trying to get a good night's sleep, and definitely bad if you think Freddy Krueger is coming after you. Tina made a good call having Nancy and Glenn sleep over, especially since her mom is out of town. It's classic wisdom that there is safety in numbers, and having a few of your friends around after such a crazy night before could definitely help you relax and maybe even save your life. But it's safe to say that that's where Tina's good ideas end. 
When the three of them hear the suspicious noises outside, the last thing they should do is leave the house and investigate. Tina's yard is dark and full of hiding spots, and danger could be lurking anywhere. Even though he's a jerk, they're actually lucky when they find out that the only one out there is Rod. The group should never have split up to go to sleep, especially since they know that Tina and Nancy had nightmares about Freddy just the night before. If they were really determined to get some sleep, the four of them should have stayed together in the living room so the two of them could sleep while the other two stood guard, and kept each other awake. Even if they absolutely had to be alone, Tina could have at least asked Rod to stay awake long enough to wake her up if she starts having another nightmare. They're all about to realize that splitting up was a huge mistake. Sure enough, as soon as they fall asleep, Freddy makes his return. Nancy barely manages not to get killed right away, and pretty much only escapes by dumb luck since she hadn't completely fallen asleep yet when Freddy tries to get her through the ceiling. Tina, on the other hand, is about to make another series of bad decisions, and in a minute, her luck is going to finally run out. Now, before I went to bed that night, I definitely would have done some research about what to do if I had another nightmare. Experts say that the best way to wake yourself up from a nightmare is to first realize that you are in one. That may sound hard at first, but there are actually ways you can train yourself to be able to do this. What you need to do is to be able to recognize small details in your surroundings and the events taking place, and this will clue you in that you're in a dream. This could be as simple as ordinary things being the wrong color or people having the wrong amount of fingers, but in a dream, something will always be at least a little bit off. You can practice this by just taking more time to observe your surroundings in real life and thinking what might be out of place if you were dreaming. The more you think about it in real life, the better your chances will be of recognizing a dream when you're asleep. It may seem crazy, but when you do realize you're in a nightmare and want to get out, you should do something shocking like try to jump off a cliff and hopefully, the sudden jolt will wake you up. Tina can tell right away that she's in another nightmare and tries to wake up Rod, which is a good start. But when Rod won't budge, instead of trying to wake herself or anyone up, Tina decides to walk out into the creepy street alone and unprepared once again. At this point, she's just asking to be killed by Freddy, and he shows up and starts chasing Tina right away. Now, you may be running for your life, but being chased by Freddy actually gives you a good opportunity to learn some important things about his abilities. His super long arms and scraping knives make it clear that it's probably not a good idea to try and fight him. And when he cuts his fingers off in front of Tina and even has his whole face ripped off without showing any pain, you can tell that even if you did fight back, you probably couldn't damage him. He can also teleport and pop out anywhere while he's chasing you, so running away isn't going to be much use either. With that ruled out, you would know that the only thing left to do is to try and wake yourself up however you can and fast. Tina barely tries to fight, run, or wake herself up and pretty much just stands there in horror until it's already too late. She's made a few too many bad decisions and isn't going to make it until the end of the movie. When Rod wakes up and sees Tina screaming and thrashing around, he is way too slow to react. He only had a split second, but if he had grabbed Tina and tried to wake her up, she might have survived. Instead, he just stands there and screams as he watches her be violently killed. Running away without trying to explain anything is only going to make him look guilty and make everyone sure that he is the one who killed Tina. Even though he is terrified, Rod should have stayed and explained the situation to his friends and the police when they arrived, since he wasn't the last person to see Tina alive and the only one who saw what happened to her. He didn't see much and it would have sounded crazy, but the information he had could have helped end this nightmare sooner. The next morning, Nancy is about to leave for school, but her mom is worried because she can tell she hasn't slept all night. Nancy promises that she'll get some sleep during study hall and heads off for school. While she's walking down the street, Rod suddenly bursts out from behind some bushes and pulls her off to the side of the road. Rod promises that he's not going to hurt her and says that he's afraid the police are going to kill him, even though he swears he's not the one who killed Tina. He tries to explain that there was another invisible person in the room. But just then, Nancy's policeman dad confronts them with his revolver drawn, and Rod makes a break for it down the street. Several more police cars arrive to arrest Rod, and when they search him, they find his switchblade from before. Now, it definitely looks like Rod is the killer. At school later, Nancy falls asleep during class, and that's when Freddy comes for her again. She starts to dream and sees Tina's bloody body zipped in a bag in the classroom reaching out for her. She wanders out of the classroom and into a dark hallway, where she sees Tina's corpse being dragged around a corner. Nancy runs around the corner and crashes into a creepy hall monitor, who is wearing a red and green sweater just like Freddy's. She can tell something isn't right and runs away, but when she turns around, she sees the hall monitor wearing Freddy's glove and laughing at her. 
Nancy tries to escape the basement, but ends up in the same creepy boiler room from the beginning of the movie. Freddy steps out from the shadows and slashes his own chest, showing the festering maggots and revolting ooze underneath. He chases her deeper into the basement, and just when Freddy has her totally cornered, Nancy yells out that it's just a dream and slams her arm down on a red-hot pipe, shocking herself awake from the pain and successfully escaping the nightmare. Okay, since he ran away from the scene of the crime, I can't blame Nancy's dad and the police for thinking that Rod is the killer. The story that a crazy killer murdered Tina in her dreams is pretty hard to believe, even if your own daughter is the one telling you. Nancy needs to find a better way to get her parents to believe her, but she doesn't have anything for proof right now. Nancy stays up the rest of the night, which is a smart decision. You know for sure now that you don't want to be going to sleep alone after what happened to Tina, but there's a big problem with just staying awake. Science says that the average person can only go without sleep for about two days straight before starting to have very bad side effects. Skipping sleep for longer than 36 hours makes it very hard to think clearly, and going much longer than that can actually lead to hallucinations. When you've got Freddy Krueger coming for you in your sleep, the last thing you need is to be hallucinating while you're awake. It wouldn't take long before you couldn't tell what was a dream and what was real life anymore. So Nancy's plan to try and get some sleep during class is actually a pretty good idea. You should never sleep during class, but in this case we'll make an exception. And having lots of people around to hopefully wake her up if she has a nightmare is definitely a good plan. Nancy wakes up in class going totally crazy. Her teacher tries to calm her down and says that she'll call her mother, but Nancy says she'll go home right away and walks out of class. Outside she cries and thinks she must be going crazy, but the burn on her arm is definitely real. Nancy decides to visit Rod in jail and try and figure out what's going on. He still insists that an invisible person was in the room with them and killed Tina, even though he knows how unbelievable that story is. Rod says that even though he couldn't see who did it, he did see the four slashes appear across Tina's stomach at the same time. The cuts definitely could have been from Freddy's glove. Nancy is so freaked out that she runs out of the room, but before she leaves, she tells Rod that she believes it wasn't him. That night, Nancy is so exhausted that she falls asleep in the bathtub. Sure enough, Freddy reaches up from under the water and tries to drag her down, drowning her. Nancy's mom hears her screaming and tries to run to help, but the door is locked again, and Nancy manages to escape from Freddy just before her mom gets in. Nancy promises her mom that it was nothing and she is going to go to bed now, but as soon as her mom is gone, Nancy grabs some stay awake pills from the medicine cabinet. Clearly she isn't planning on going to sleep tonight. Later, while Nancy is trying her best to stay awake, she hears a noise at her bedroom window, and when she gets up to check, she is surprised by Glenn, who came over to check on her. She lets him in and asks him if he believes in the boogeyman. Glenn says no and that he thinks Rod killed Tina. Nancy says that she still isn't sure and that she wants to try a plan. She says that she is going to go to sleep and makes Glenn promise to stand guard and stay awake no matter what. In her dream, Nancy follows a creepy path through the dark streets that leads right to the police station. Through the window, she can see that Rod is asleep in his cell. Suddenly, the door opens and Freddy walks in. He walks right through the bars of Rod's cell and starts to wrap the bed sheets around his neck, laughing at Nancy the whole time. She screams out for Glenn, but turns around to see Tina in a body bag covered in worms and slime. Just then, Freddy bursts from the shadows and begins chasing Nancy down the street. She runs back to her house and slams the door locked behind her, hoping that that will slow Freddy down. She tries to run upstairs, but her feet melt through the stair as if the stairs were made of marshmallows. Freddy starts to break through the door, and Nancy runs upstairs to her bedroom. She shuts the bedroom door behind her and sees Glenn asleep in his chair, which reminds her of the advice he gave Tina before. She tries to tell herself that Freddy isn't real and this is all just a dream, but as she's repeating this to herself, her mirror suddenly explodes and Freddy comes flying through it, tackling her onto the bed. Freddy grabs Nancy and slashes at her with his knives, laughing as he is about to kill her, but Nancy's alarm clock luckily goes off and wakes her up just in time. Okay, it's understandable why Nancy might think she's going crazy here. These are a lot more than just ordinary nightmares, and they aren't going away, so Nancy should really start to think about getting some psychological help. That is, if it wasn't for the fact that the very real burn mark on her arm shows that she isn't going crazy at all. Nancy knows for sure now that if she falls asleep, Freddy is going to come after her, and that if she gets hurt in one of the nightmares, she'll get hurt in real life too. When Nancy falls asleep in the bathtub, she almost gets herself killed yet again because this time she decided to lock the door so that nobody could get in to help her. After not being able to get to Tina in time because her door was locked, you would think that Nancy would be smart enough to make sure she didn't lock herself in a room alone. She's lucky she managed to escape from Freddy here, and better start asking someone to watch out for her if she thinks she's gonna fall asleep 
sleep again. Later, Nancy decides to go back into her dreams and confront Freddy, and this time she asks Glenn to watch out for her and wake her up if anything happens. Using teamwork here is a great idea, but you have to rely on the other person to actually stay awake. Confronting Freddy can help Nancy learn more about him and maybe even how to stop him. So as long as she has a way to wake up, this could actually be a good plan. As you might expect though, Glenn falls asleep and almost immediately leaves Nancy to tangle with Freddy all on her own. When Nancy screams out for Glenn but realizes he isn't waking up, she runs straight back to her house and slams and locks the door behind her. At first, this seems like a good idea, definitely better than just screaming and doing nothing like Tina. But if you remember that Freddy can teleport, you realize that a locked door isn't actually going to do much to stop him. Running upstairs is a classic mistake from every horror movie that we should all know not to make by now, and Nancy struggles to get there just to leave herself trapped with nowhere else to escape. Just as Freddy is about to finish the job, Nancy's alarm clock goes off and she is saved by luck once again. Waking up seems to be the only thing that can actually save you from Freddy, so I would be setting up alarm clocks like crazy now. Nancy is lucky to be alive and her plan actually had some potential, but she is going to need some serious strategy and a more reliable way to wake up if she is going to beat Freddy once and for all. Nancy is super mad at Glenn for falling asleep, but before they have a chance to really talk about what happened, Nancy's mom knocks on the door. Nancy quickly sneaks Glenn out of the window, but tells him to wait for her and to not go home yet. She jumps back into bed just as her mom opens the door to check on her, but Nancy tells her that it was just a dream and promises to call if she needs anything. As soon as her mom is gone, Nancy follows Glenn out the window and the two of them go to the police station together to check on Rod. They try to convince the officer at the front desk to let them in, but Nancy's dad is there and doesn't want to let them get any more involved in this crazy murder mystery. Nancy is finally able to convince her dad to check on Rod, but by the time they get to him, it's already too late. Freddy wrapped the bedsheets around Rod's neck to strangle him just like in the nightmare and hung him from the ceiling of his cell. The officers try to save him, but by the time they are able to get him down, Rod is already dead. Nancy can't help but laugh because now she is sure of who did it. Nancy's mom takes her to the local institute which specializes in the study of sleep disorders. Nancy asks the doctor for a pill to help her stop dreaming, but the doctors say this wouldn't work because if you don't dream, you'll go crazy. The doctors instead hook Nancy up to a fancy medical machine that will scan her brain waves while she sleeps. The doctor and her mom watch from the next room as Nancy falls asleep as soon as she is in REMS, a point during sleep where dreams definitely occur. Suddenly the machine begins to go crazy and Nancy is screaming and flailing around in the bed. She's having another horrible nightmare and Freddy must be coming for her again. Nancy's mom and the doctors burst into the room and wake her up, but when they try to give her a shot to calm her down, Nancy shoves the doctor away, revealing a fresh bloody cut on her arm. Even worse, Nancy reaches under the blanket and pulls out the most terrifying evidence yet, Freddy's ugly hat that she managed to bring out of her dream. Her mother and the doctors can't believe what they are seeing, and they are left totally speechless, finally unable to come up with a logical explanation. Okay, Nancy and Glenn made a good call rushing to the police station to try and save Rod right away. Nancy knows that Freddy is coming after all of them, and they have to make sure Rod isn't left alone in his cell if they want to save their friend. At the same time, you can't blame her father for being suspicious at first. If your daughter showed up to the police station late in the middle of the night insisting to see someone you were sure was a killer, you'd probably have a lot of questions too. Nancy is finally able to convince her dad to let her in, but by then, Freddy already has gotten to Rod. Now, the police in this situation might not be able to explain what happened, but there also isn't much for them to investigate anymore now that their prime suspect is dead. All Nancy can do now is go home and prepare for Freddy's next attack. After she breaks down at Rod's funeral, Nancy's mom finally decides to get her some professional help at a sleep clinic. Nancy definitely doesn't want to go back to sleep right now, but these doctors might be her best hope at figuring out what is going on. And like the doctor says, if she doesn't get some sleep soon, she will go crazy for sure. At least there are a lot of people around to wake her up when she has a nightmare. And even though the doctors don't learn much from the test, Nancy is able to make one of her most important breakthroughs yet when she brings Freddy's hat out of the dream. The adults are left speechless by this and must be pretty dumb if they still don't believe Nancy now. I don't know about you, but if I was that doctor, I'd be on the phone with the FBI right away. Nancy is still on her own, but knowing that she can bring things out of the dream and into the real world gives her a much better chance at actually being able to stop Freddy. She could probably grab him and bring him out where the police can finally get him. I would even try to bring something into my next dream with me, since maybe it works in reverse and then you could have a weapon to fight Freddy with. We're finally making some progress, and it's starting to look like we might actually stand a chance at beating Freddy Krueger. The next morning, Nancy's mom can tell that she went another night without getting any sleep. 
Nancy says she won't go to sleep because at this point she is positive that Freddy Krueger is trying to kill her in her dreams. She wants her mother to tell her what she is hiding and gets so frustrated with her that she starts to mock her drinking habit. Nancy's mom is so mad at her daughter that she reaches back and slaps her and tells Nancy that Freddy can't be the one coming after her because Freddy is already dead. Nancy smashes her mother's bottle of liquor and storms out of the house to find Glenn. Nancy and Glenn take a walk together, and he tells her that if you see a monster in your dreams, all you have to do is turn your back on it to take away its power, and then it'll disappear. Nancy isn't so sure that will work on Freddy, and is reading a book about booby traps. She's trying to come up with a plan to get rid of Freddy once and for all. When Nancy gets home, she sees that her mom has put bars on all the windows of the house. She asks her mom why she did this, and her mom tells her to follow her down to the basement, where she is finally going to tell Nancy everything she knows about Freddy Krueger. Nancy's mom tells her that Freddy Krueger was a child murderer who killed a bunch of kids in the neighborhood. Freddy was arrested for his crimes, but never went to prison because of an unsigned search warrant that was used to catch him. After Freddy got out, Nancy's mom and the other neighborhood parents tracked him down to get their revenge. They found him in the boiler room, where he used to murder children, and lit the entire place on fire with gasoline, burning Freddy to death. To prove that he is dead, Nancy's mom shows her that she has had Freddy's knives hidden in their basement the whole time. That night, Nancy calls Glenn to warn him that Freddy might be coming and to ask for his help in catching him, because tonight she is going to try to bring Freddy out of her dreams. She plans to grab onto Freddy just before Glenn wakes her up and bring him into the real world just like she did with his hat. Nancy makes Glenn promise to meet her on the front porch at midnight and not to fall asleep whenever he does. Nancy sits awake and waits until midnight, and when she checks outside her window to see if Glenn is awake, she notices Glenn's dad watching her suspiciously from his porch. She tries to call him, but Glenn is fast asleep, and instead his parents answer the phone. Glenn's dad firmly tells her to call back in the morning and disconnects their phone so that Nancy can't call him again. Nancy is about to give up when her phone rings and she answers hoping it's Glenn, but instead hears a horrible screeching sound from the other end. She's so scared that she rips the phone cable right out of the wall. Suddenly, the phone rings again and Nancy knows that this shouldn't be possible since it is completely disconnected. She picks up the phone and this time Freddy Krueger is the one who answers. He tells Nancy that he is her boyfriend now and turns her phone into his mouth and licks her. Nancy freaks out and stomps her phone to pieces on the floor. She realizes that Freddy must be going to kill Glenn. Nancy rushes downstairs to try and help him, but her mother has locked her inside the house and thrown away the key. She is completely trapped with no way to help Glenn. At the stroke of midnight, Freddy reaches up through the bed and drags Glenn down into a black hole. A massive geyser of blood rushes out and covers every inch of the bedroom. Glenn's mom rushes into his room and screams in horror when she sees blood on every surface. There is absolutely no way that Glenn survived, and now Nancy is the only one left out of all her friends. Nancy has officially had enough. She says that she is going to go into her dreams and bring Freddy out, and makes her dad promise that he will be there to arrest him. Her dad agrees to help and asks his partner to watch his daughter's house while he continues working on the crime scene. Meanwhile, in her room, Nancy starts putting together booby traps from the book she was reading. She fills a lamp with gunpowder, creating an explosive trap, hangs a sledgehammer above her bedroom door, sets up several trip wires, and sets her alarm clock to make sure she wakes up in exactly 10 minutes. This time, she is going to throw everything she has at Freddy. Before the final confrontation, Nancy tells her mom she loves her and kisses her goodnight. Nancy falls asleep and starts to dream, determined to beat Freddy once and for all. In her dream, Nancy walks down into her basement and goes to check on Freddy's knives, but she finds out that they aren't there anymore. She sees a door that doesn't belong there and follows the path down a creepy metal staircase, right into Freddy's boiler room. Nancy goes deeper, determined to face her fears, and calls out for Freddy to come and get her. Deep in the workshop, she finds Glenn's bloody headphones, but still there is no sign of Freddy. Just as Nancy is giving up hope, Freddy lunges from the shadows and begins to chase her. Nancy runs and leaps from the metal staircase, somehow falling and winding back up in her own front yard. There are only 10 seconds left before her alarm clock wakes her up, but once again, Freddy is gone. With 5 seconds left, Freddy bursts out of the dark and Nancy tackles him just as the alarm goes off. Nancy wakes up screaming in her own bed. Nancy looks around the room, but it looks like she wasn't able to bring Freddy back with her. 
Nancy starts to cry and thinks she must be crazy. And just at that moment, Freddy pounces out from under her bed and runs towards her. She did manage to bring him out of the dream, after all. She bashes Freddy in the head with a coffee pot and rushes out of the room, locking the door behind her from the outside and setting up the sledgehammer trap. She runs down the hallway, taunting Freddy to come get her. While Freddy tries to break the door down, Nancy opens an upstairs window and screams for help from the police officers across the street, but they still don't realize what is going on. She runs downstairs calling for her dad. Freddy finally gets the door open and is instantly slammed in the chest by the hanging sledgehammer. He stumbles and falls down the stairs, landing right at Nancy's feet. She runs into the living room, and when Freddy follows her, he trips over another wire, triggering the explosive lamp that knocks him off his feet. Freddy is stunned for a moment, and Nancy calls out once again for help, but he quickly recovers and chases her down into the basement. Nancy circles around the basement, causing Freddy to briefly lose sight of her, and she takes this moment to surprise him by throwing a bottle of alcohol all over him. Freddy is completely covered in the flammable liquid, and Nancy throws a lit match at his feet, engulfing him in flames. She runs back upstairs, locking the basement door behind her and leaving Freddy to burn. Nancy's dad and the other policemen finally break into the house and run straight into the basement, but Nancy sees Freddy's flaming footsteps leading upstairs directly up to her mom's bedroom. Nancy and her dad rush in to see Freddy on fire attacking her mom. Nancy hits Freddy with a chair, and her dad covers them with a blanket, trying to smother the flames. When they pull back the sheet, they see her mother's charred body reaching out to them as it descends the bed into some sort of unholy void, only for the pit to close and leave the bed empty looking as if nothing had ever happened. Nancy cries out for her mom, but it's too late. She has become Freddy Krueger's most recent victim. Nancy stares at the bed for a moment, and just as she turns around, Freddy rises up through the sheets coming to claim his ultimate victim. Without turning around, Nancy tells Freddy that she knows he's there. She confronts Freddy, telling him that she knows that this is all a dream, and that she takes back all of the power she has been giving to him by believing in him. She turns away and reaches for the door, and as Freddy lunges towards her, sure enough he dissolves into nothing and totally disappears. Nancy did it. She finally beat Freddy Krueger. Okay, Nancy's mom really should have said something a lot sooner if she's known about Freddy all along. I know she is trying to keep that part of her past hidden, but the inexplicable murders of two of her daughter's friends should have been enough to convince her to tell Nancy what she knows. Glenn is still one of the only people who offers Nancy anything close to productive advice. If Nancy can just remember that she is in a nightmare, she can take all of Freddy's power away from him and make it so he can't hurt her at all. Studying up on booby traps is a great idea too, since she can use the traps against Freddy in the dream world or the real world if she manages to bring him out. She knows Freddy can't be killed by conventional weapons, but setting some traps to slow him down can definitely buy her some valuable time during their next confrontation. Nancy's mom continues to be the exact opposite of helpful when she decides to put prison bars on every window of their house. First of all, Freddy comes for you in your dreams, and he can teleport, so I don't think those bars are going to stop him. If anything, the only thing barring up the windows does is trap Nancy and her mom inside the house with limited ways to escape. She also could have known that keeping Freddy's glove was a bad idea. I don't know if he is directly connected to it in some way, but it sure seems possible, and with him back from the dead and on a killing spree, the last thing I would want is his murder weapon in my basement. Since she was part of the group of parents who killed Freddy, she should have known that if he did come back, her and her family would be high on his revenge list. Not sharing this information with Nancy was very dumb and could have gotten her own daughter killed. Nancy knows her mom is completely useless, so she comes up with a plan on her own. She calls Glenn and asks him to stay awake and help her when she brings Freddy out. But sure enough, when the phones are disconnected, he falls asleep and Freddy gets him. I would have tried another way to stay in touch with Glenn like walkie talkies since constantly calling his house phone in the middle of the night was definitely going to annoy his parents. If they had come up with a better way to keep Glenn alive, they could have saved his life. With Glenn dead, Nancy is totally fed up and ready to get rid of Freddy once and for all. I would set up lots of booby traps, just like Nancy did, to hopefully use them against Freddy during the fight. A sledgehammer to the chest and an exploding lamp to the face are just what Freddy deserves. Nancy smartly sets an alarm clock to wake her up in exactly 10 minutes, and wears her watch into the dream so she knows exactly how much time she has. I would have even set the alarm in her mom's room, even though she is useless just so there would be one more person awake to help when I brought Freddy out. This time, when Freddy chases her, Nancy does the only thing left to do and tackles him just as her alarm goes off. Just like that, Freddy is in the real world and chasing her around the house. 
The booby traps she sets up works perfectly, and I would have kept getting Freddy to chase me until he ran into everything that I had set up for him. Setting Freddy on fire and locking him in the basement seems like it would finally take him out, but I would have been extra suspicious because I'd remember that Freddy actually can't be hurt. After I trapped him down there, the first thing I would have done is run upstairs to check on my mom since I know he was after her too. Nancy and her dad wait just a little too long and Freddy is able to kill her mom and get his revenge after all. When Freddy comes back for her, Nancy knows there is nothing left for her to try but the advice Glenn gave her before. I would be so scared to try this, but there really is no other way. I don't know about you, but I would really be looking forward to getting some sleep now. It's a beautiful morning and Nancy and her mom walk out onto their front porch. Nancy asks her mom how she's feeling, and she says she feels great, even though she can't remember anything from the night before. Glenn, Tina, and Rod pull up in their red convertible just as a fog seems to be rolling in. Nancy hops in the car and gives Glenn a kiss, when suddenly the roof snaps shut, and it's the same red and green striped pattern as Freddy's sweater. The windows roll up and the doors lock, trapping Nancy and her friends inside. Nancy pounds on the window and screams for her mom, who only laughs and smiles as the car begins to drive away. Suddenly, Freddy smashes his arm through the window, grabbing Nancy's mom and pulling her in. It turns out the nightmare is just getting started, after all. But what would you do? How would you stay awake and keep the Dream Master himself, Freddy Krueger, out of your nightmares? Let everyone know in the comments! Thank you so much for watching! Leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Beat playlist for more videos just like this! And don't forget, from now on, we'll be uploading on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Until next time, have a damn good day.